Good evening, Paul. I'm joined here by Congressman Lloyd Doggett, here to just talk about what's happened in the nation over the past week. The country is mourning this shooting in Newtown, Connecticut, and people say that now it's different. Do you see a difference here in terms of the reaction to this shooting on Capitol Hill? I hope it will be different. You know, when I see the horror these families are going through, I think of my own grandchildren who are in school at about the same age. And it just is uh, unspeakable. They're not words to cover the feelings and the emotions we have. Whether that will cause some of my colleagues to join those of us who've been willing to stand up against having weapons of war on our streets remains to be seen. It will take a few weeks or months before the issue comes up. And only through sustained citizen concern is there any hope of overcoming this entrenched gun lobby here. Now, Governor Rick Perry suggests allowing teachers and administrators to be armed in schools, and he says we shouldn't have a knee-jerk reaction not to discuss those sort of options. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think Governor Perry's reaction is as bizarre as it is to most subjects. Uh, it, uh, we, we don't do enough to support our teachers to teach, and now expecting them to be law enforcement officers in addition uh, just doesn't make any sense at all. Certainly I support uh, having school police forces as we do in the Austin area so that there's someone there on call who's a law enforcement officer, but the idea that if every uh, teacher uh, packs a gun that will be safer, uh, that makes no more sense than the effort last year to have more guns on our university campuses. Now there is a piece of legislation um, that is sponsored by New York Congresswoman Carolyn McCarthy that would put a ban on high capacity magazines for guns. And there are some that want to try and push that through this lame duck session between now and the end of the year. Is that something that you think could happen? Well, I'm a sponsor of that measure. As you know, Carolyn lost her husband uh, in a shooting quite similar to the craze shooting in, uh, in Connecticut. Uh, I believe that's a reasonable measure uh, that would limit these high capacity clips and again reduce the dangers, not eliminate it entirely, but reduce the danger to our school children and others. I doubt that in these waning days of the year it can be considered this year. I wish it could. It's clear and simple, but the same uh, gun lobby that blocked its consideration over the last two years will probably stand in the way of it being considered before the end of the year. Now, the president has also talked about mental health, as well as a lot of your Republican colleagues who have said, well, we need to pay more attention to our mental health community and how much money we're giving them. And, and maybe that would help in terms of deterring gun violence. Um, do you think Texas does enough in that area? Not at all. I think that uh, we certainly do need to do more in the mental health area. Mm -hmm. While most people with serious mental uh, disorders uh, are not violent, uh, there are some who pose a danger, and we need to be making mental health services more accessible. That was one of the goals of the Affordable Health Care Act, to try to get the services there before somebody harms others. But I think there's much more that needs to be done. It's not a substitute for reducing gun violence and addressing those issues directly, but it is an important aspect of responding to the horror of uh, what happened in Connecticut. And so what do you think of the president putting together this task force that kind of does that comprehensive overview look at this? I think that's a, an important aspect of it. We have an, another important aspect right in Central Texas with the Alert Center and the School Safety Center at Texas State uh, where we train both educators and law enforcement officers about how to deal with an active shooter situation. I think that should be part of it too. We need uh, this presidential effort to culminate in action. We need much more than speeches. We need it to be placed high on the president's agenda as we enter the new year and not let all of these children have died in vain. Yeah. All right. Let's switch gears just a little bit. Tonight, the House is expected to vote on the Republicans' Plan B uh, plan, uh, all part of the sort of fiscal cliff negotiations already. Senate Democrats have said they don't support it. The White House says they don't support that. Um, will we be able to avert the fiscal cliff before the end of the year? It's not at all certain that we'll be able to because it's not at all certain that Speaker Boehner can get Republicans to vote for anything this year. I think we will have not only Plan B, we're already to C, and I think they're both an F. 
Uh, it is just an abandonment, again, uh, by Republicans of any attempt to work together. I'll have to say that some of the proposals that have been advanced by both sides, though, do bother me. Uh, they're talking about what to do about taxes on those who earn 400000 or those that earn a million. In the Central Texas area, the median family income is well under 100000 uh, I, I think that the debate is taking place about people that are not uh, very much the ordinary Texans that, that I represent, and I'm particularly concerned about some of these proposals and how they would affect retirement security. The idea of reducing the cost of living increase to match inflation for seniors, the idea of raising the Medicare eligibility age, these are concerns that every senior should have and near senior, that their health care security, that their social security could be pushed over the cliff in these negotiations. So I just want to clarify something. You would like to see the president keep a hard line on the $250,000 uh, tax increases. That's what he said for the last two years. Yeah. That's about two, two and a half, three times the median family income in Central Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it's not unreasonable to ask those who earn more than that uh, to go back to the Clinton era tax rates, which served America well, and help us provide the vital government services like health care security through Medicare that we need to provide. Well, Congressman, I thank you so much thank for you. chatting with me and good luck. Merry as Christmas. You. <laughs> thank I think you. we may spend ours here. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully you'll get something done before Christmas, but that is a very tall order, a heavy lift. Uh, from Washington, D.C., I'm Aaron Billups. Paul, back to you.